Oh, we are back now with four-time Grammy nominee Jewel. Jewel has sold more than 30 million albums worldwide over her nearly three-decade career with hits like you were meant for me. Well, Jewel is also a mental health advocate, creating the hashtag Not Alone Challenge and a visual artist. Her new EP weaves all of that together. It's called The Portal, a meditative journey, and will be released on November 15th. Jewel, we love when you're here. Good morning. Thank you. So when would you say you knew that mental health and wellness was going to be a big part of your mission? I moved out at 15 and I knew that wasn't a great idea. I came from an abusive home and I knew that I had my work cut out for me. I wanted to learn how to be happy and see if it was a learnable skill. Yeah. Third year, uh, if I'm not mistaken, of, of the Not Alone Challenge, there's of course the hashtag that we want folks to use, hashtag Not Alone. What, what does the hashtag mean? What's it designed to do? We want people to understand if they're having mental health struggles that they're not alone. This is the largest mental health social media challenge in history. We've mm. been able to reach billions of people now wow. with an audience, thanks to you guys' help. And our goal is to make sure we're not just raising awareness, but putting tools in the hands of people who need it the most. And thanks to Dr. George Rapier and the Foundation Reserve, we're matching donations up to $1.2 million. What kind of tools? We do all kinds. So it's access to different websites. We have our own at notalonechallenge.org, where there's behavioral and cognitive tools, so CBT and DBT skills, okay. as well as free resources that people can access no matter, because what we're finding is people don't have equal access. Not everybody can afford a therapist. Not everybody has the money for that. And so coming up with innovative ways to make sure that there's practical tools that people can use. Hmm. Love that. Speaking of innovation, you have always been passionate to work these visual arts into your projects. Can you kind of explain to me why and how you kind of combine all of these different ways of of share, sharing your music? So. Yeah, so I studied marble carving and sculpture when I was in school a very long time ago. Mm -hmm. And so now have recently been getting more into visual art and incorporating music and technology. And so at Finding in the Arts, I'll be able to debut a sculpture December 2nd. Wow. It's called Heart of the Ocean. And what I'll be doing is using the ocean's data as a medium and creating a giant sculptural instrument that the ocean will play. There it is right there, I believe wow. we're showing folks at home. Yeah, so that's the data. Every single strand is a different data point. From and the ocean. Yeah, and so there's surface data, there's animal data, there's salinity data, oh my goodness. and that affects the lights and that affects the sound actually. How did you, how did you come up with that? I don't know. I was thinking of it in the shower one day. <laughs> like most ideas. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's where some of my best work has been done. As well. Exactly. Was it always the intention to to marry the art and and the music? Yeah, for me, they okay. really go together. I have synesthesia, so I see color when I sing. And I think we only value what we're in a relationship with. And we've fallen out of relationship with nature. And so I wanted to build a sculptural piece that helped put us back in relationship mm -hmm. and let the ocean have a voice. Yeah, it is so amazing. I never thought of seeing the ocean in that way before, but all the activity that's happening that we can't see. Yeah, being able to visualize it and sonify it has been really fun. Yeah, you actually um, just wrapped a tour with Melissa Etheridge, which must have been so much fun. I know Case, your son, was out on the road with you. I mean, how has your relationship grown over the years? I'm so lucky, you know, as a musician, I get to have my son with me so much, and that's a pre pleasure and a privilege, and seeing him drum on tour with me and enjoy traveling has been incredible. Yeah. How yeah. old is he now? He's 13. Gosh, Aww. 13. And clearly still talking to mom. You know, a lot of 13-year-olds, it's like grunting and bra, and yeah. you guys seem to have a really good relationship. He's sweet. He's like, mom, if I... Have I been okay as a teenager? I was like, oh, yes. Oh, oh my gosh. That's so what a great I'm conversation like, I need you to, to misbehave. You should be yeah. like, wow, you're just 13. I know. Let's see how the next five years play out. Just yeah. warming up. Yeah. So what's next for you? He, oh, sorry. I just was seeing his little candles. He's making yeah. candles. Oh, really? I'm working on the Craig's sculpture. Craig's making candles, too. Candles. Really? Yeah, I love Aww, candle making. What kind of wax does he use? He uses coconut wax. That's, we like the low melting point. All the cool kids are using <laughs> coconut now. He's a coconut soy blend. Yeah. But coconut's also easy to work with. And at least he's not using paraffin wax. That's yes, the worst. Yes, exactly. These are clean candles. <laughs> I want him to come in. We should mix it. I'd love to oh make candles. Oh my God, he would that. love that. We should make a candle club. Done. He would Done. love it. That'd be amazing. That this really fun. took a turn, Jill. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mom, you're for it, yeah. right? She's a mom. Of course, <laughs> she wants that to happen. Jill, thank you so much. Thanks for That's having. so cool. All right. Uh,